and tell you it is not. No one could ever look you in the eye and tell you that a case that's 40 years old in its 41st year of investigation is not going to be a tough road to hoe. Well, in Montgomery County, we dubbed the investigation in the missing girls as cause. Well, when you're trying to find the people who are responsible for the abduction of a 10 and 12 year old child community, searching for the answers of what happened to their daughters. This is truly a worthy cause that we are all embarked in. And I can tell you every person that I know that's been involved in this investigation, above all else, has wanted to see some closure come to the Lyons family who were with us yesterday at the press event in Montgomery County. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of the people of Montgomery County, uh, my office and the police department, we pledge the continuing level of cooperation uh, to the prosecution down here in Bedford County, and we will have you will have this collegiality with us, and we are happy to be at your side as we try to bring justice to this matter. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Captain Darren Frank with the Montgomery County Police Major Crimes Division. I'm the director of the division, and I'm honored to work with the detectives of the cold case section, two of whom are, are here today. Just a couple quick things that I wanted to add on to what uh, Chief Major said so well yesterday. Uh, first of all, we need to thank the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations uh, and the Calvert County Sheriffs as well as the Delaware State Police. We talked about how many states we've been into with this investigation and where all these investigators have gone. We continue to go across the country and across our border into the state of Virginia to find the information and the facts that we need to give Randy Krantz and John McCarthy the product that they need to make sure that the persons responsible for harming Sheila and Catherine Lyons are held accountable. The uh, uh, other thing I want to make note of is the Bedford County Sheriffs. Uh, we dropped in on them a year ago, literally dropped in, and I got a call from Sheriff Brown, and within minutes he had opened his doors, opened his resources to us. I will tell you, we haven't seen a joint task force uh, of this nature since probably the sniper investigation up in Montgomery County. Uh, they have been fantastic true law enforcement professionals and I think it's a uh, it's a model what we have done here uh, with Sheriff Brown and, and the men and women of the Bedford County Sheriff's uh, in getting to this point which is just the beginning of indictments. We remain focused uh, on obtaining all the information that there is to be had in this case. We remain focused on investigating not only Lloyd Welch but Dick Welch, Pat, Wal Pat Welch, and uh, Henry Parker. Among, uh, among just a few, there are others that we are focused on. That's also why these investigators are here today and will continue to be here in Bedford County working with the great folks down here, including the Virginia State Police. This investigation's not over. We have a great deal of work to do. And I just want to thank Sheriff Brown, Randy Krantz, John McCarthy, for everything they've done to empower us to find out what happened to Sheila and Catherine Lyon. Thank you. Thank you, Captain John. Thank you very much. Um, well, one thing we did do today, uh, we made it a little bit cooler for everybody that uh, came. Yesterday was a Start out with the new of this investigation. I would like to start out by, since we are on, we call our home turf here. I'd like to thank some people for their support of our efforts uh, in this case. Uh, in the back, we have one of our board of supervisors members, uh, Supervisor Kerry Martin. Uh, Kerry has been instrumental uh, since day one. He is a, is a big, big uh, supporter of law enforcement in general and sheriff's office. But uh, he was instrumental in our funding efforts for this, for this project. Um, I, to say this played havoc on our budget, 
uh, well, that's putting it mildly, but our Board of Supervisors, to include our County Administrator, said absolutely no problem, and it never has been. Uh, we have, as I said yesterday, probably expended hours and investigative spent. Uh, it, it's, it's compared to the uh, police department has spent in the last 40 years. But what I do want to, th I want to thank uh, Virginia State Police. Uh, we have, we have them here today. Captain Lyons, he's not here today, uh, but First Sergeant uh, is here. I want to thank the Virginia Department of Transportation. Any of you up on the mountain uh, in the cold, snowy weather, uh, we want to thank them. Federal Bureau of Investigation supported us. Uh, Dr. Cliff Boyd and Donna Boyd, Radford University Forensic Science Institute, were big, big supporters. Bedford uh, Town Police, the chief is here today. Again, there was nothing we could ask the chief that he didn't, he didn't uh, get to us post haste. Montgomery County, obviously, Montgomery County Police Department, Montgomery County, uh, Maryland State Attorney's Office, Virginia Department of Emergency Management, Liberty University, Liberty University fed while we were up on the mountain uh, in the cold, cold, snowy weather. Uh, they brought hot meals in, I think it was three or four days in a row while we were up there. Uh, not only, I say meal, meals, they provided breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all of the investigators that were up on the mountain. Owens Market uh, supplied us with some delicious chicken uh, for one luncheon. Thaxton Baptist Church, Thaxton Community Center. Department of Forensic Science, Chief Medical Examiner's Office for Western Virginia, instrumental in our investigation to date. Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles, Prince George's County, Maryland, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And we want to thank the citizens of the mountain. Um, I would not be standing here today uh, at this juncture, nor would uh, Randy, nor would John, if it were not for the real heroes, as far as I'm concerned, of this effort. And they're the men and women assigned to this case, to this investigation. Um, I, uh, Randy, or, or John, we are usually in front of the cameras, uh, and we know, and you should know, that without the, and I'll call them worker bees, uh, none of what has transpired over the past several days would have been possible. Now, I know I'm going to miss somebody in thanking them, but what I would love to do is, if you'll allow me to introduce the teams, uh, Lieutenant Darrell Saunders, Lieutenant, where are you? Just raise your hand. Uh, in his team, uh, Captain Darren Frank, who you've, who you've met, uh, Captain Tim Lyon with Virginia State Police. Uh, his team, they, they have been with Virginia State Police. Again, it's absolutely nothing that we have asked for that they haven't given us. Uh, Captain Lyons has been on scene a number of times. Uh, and again, I speak with him probably once or twice a month, and he's always asking, what else can we do? So with that, with all the thanks out of the way, what we want to talk about today is a new phase in this investigation. And it is a new phase. We finished one law enforcement-wise yesterday. Now it's in the courts, uh, the prosecutor's arena. And I have the greatest, greatest confidence in both Randy and John in this effort. But the indictment of Lloyd Welch by Bedford County Multi-Jurisdictional Grand Jury on two counts of first-degree felony murder was a significant, and I underline significant, milestone in the process of resolving the case of the abduction and murder of Sheila and Catherine Lyon. Lord Welch's indictments uh, charge him with the culpability of the murder of the Lyon sisters because they were killed in order for their captors to escape detection. The motive for the abduction of the Lyon sisters was to sexually exploit, abuse, and defile them. Operation Worthy Cause in Maryland continues, and Bedford County's Operation Determine 
justice begins. As we go forward in preparing for the trial of Lloyd Welch, the Bedford County Sheriff's Office will also continue to focus its investigative efforts on identifying and bringing to justice those individuals who added or assisted in this horrible crime. Richard Welch remains a person of interest in this case, as do other people, and I underline other people. Lloyd Welch has informed investigators that the Lyon sisters were taken so that it could be sexually exploited by him and Richard Welch. Lloyd Welch also states that he observed Richard Welch sexually assaulting one of the Lyon sisters at Richard Welch's residence shortly after the children's abduction. The Bedford County Sheriff's Office is requesting assistance from anyone who may have concerning Richard Welch's involvement and the Lyon sisters or any other incident of child exploitation. The Bedford County Sheriff's Office Investigative Division and the Southern Virginia Internet Crimes Against Force actually suited to bring critical resources to bear in the continuing investigation into the role of Richard Welch and any other others who participated, conspiring or assisted in the abduction, sexual exploitation, murder, and cover-up of the crimes committed against the Lyon sisters. The Southern Virginia Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, which we have, I'm honored and pleased to say we have been a Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force since 1967. We have brought a lot of sexual predators to justice, and we continue to do it. Um, this ICAC task force is the new part, or is a the new part of this new phase of the investigation, and we will be working closely with the National Center for Missing and, Ex uh, Missing and Exploited Children. Due to the sensitive na nature and ongoing nature of this new phase of the in investigation, we regret that we will not be taking questions on this particular part of the investigation. We would like for you in the media to get out uh, as much information as you can, and that's on the Southern Virginia ICAC. If people have a lead, if they have an idea, if they, if they see something, say something. Uh, but they can call the Southern Virginia Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force at 434-534-9521 with information or email the National Center for Mission and Exploited Children at CyberTip, CyberTip at uh, NCMEC, NECMAC.org. Again, I said we would not take questions on this particular new phase, but I understand that Captain Frank will take some questions, uh, and then after he takes, I'll let uh, Randy Kranz will address the group. Uh, thank you. I, one additional thing, uh, again, uh, I want to recognize uh, Chief, uh, Assistant Chief Ross Hamill, who uh, in May of 2013 uh, told these detectives here, we need to look at the Lion Sister case again. Now uh, we, we need to get some fresh young eyes on it. And, and these folks here, uh, uh, Detective uh, Janney, uh, Detective Leggett, and Detective Davis, who's out in the field working right now uh, on this case, uh, they have done an outstanding job with their sergeant, Chris Homrock. I can't be uh, more proud of what they've done. So uh, does anyone have any questions about uh, the Montgomery County investigation up until uh, this new phase that started in the last two days? Can you, can you talk to us uh, at all? And I'm sure it's frustrating, and, and you guys have done such tremendous work recently. But how frustrated are you that you seem to be so close Lloyd Welch um, in those days immediately 
after the abduction. I, you know, I will tell you the investigators uh, uh, back then uh, did a fine job. Uh, they worked very hard on this case. Uh, in law enforcement, there are so many things that you need to go the right way. Uh, so I, I don't think uh, myself or my team um, have really any substantial thoughts on, on that or any frustration on that. Uh, this case has been looked over time and time again. I'll tell you, when I came on uh, 19 years ago, it was part of rookie training that we talked about this case. We've talked about this case again and again. I knew about it as a young rookie. I knew about it as a young homicide detective, and, and we all wanted to play a part in, in resolving uh, this dark chapter of our, of our county history. Um, uh, and again, I can't emphasize enough what these folks have done. Uh, they have, we talk about being relentless in major crimes. These folks are the picture of relentless, along with the Bedford County Sheriff's and everyone else that has helped with this investigation. And we will continue to be relentless until every single person that harmed those girls are, are held accountable. Captain, there was a report, um, I think, two weeks after the abduction of someone who said that they saw the girls bound and gagged in the back of the station wagon. Correct. Do you believe that that tip was correct? Uh, with 40 years uh, passing by, we believe anything is possible. Uh, we have not uh, missed things. Again, witnesses see things, and, and they're very confident in what they see. Uh, and, and being 40 years separated from it, uh, uh, even being a day separated from a witness sighting like that, there's only so much you can do, especially back in 1975. So it could very well be credible. Captain, um, my experience with your agency and others, it is rare to name people publicly as persons of interest, especially when their identities are known and to be named. What was Richard Welch's role in all of this? Uh, I, I believe uh, the the Search warrants have been unsealed, uh, and, and there are, is information out there, obviously, about Lloyd Welch's statements that he has observed uh, Richard Welch sexually assaulting uh, one of the Lyons sisters. Um, we have statements uh, from Lloyd, uh, again, about the motive behind what they were looking to do. Uh, in addition to that, there's other evidence. I'm not, I'm not going to speak uh, to that specifically. Uh, but uh, there is other evidence out there besides what Lloyd Welch uh, has said. So then, why is he charged? It's an ongoing investigation. As I told you, there are other people that were focused. Are excellent, excellent counselors. Uh, they have given us uh, some uh, very clear guidance. Um, this is, uh, I can't emphasize enough, there's a 40-year head start on this crime on this ongoing conspiracy, uh, and uh, uh, I, I believe we're on a great path right now, and uh, there are many steps to come. Is there any reason other than what's been stated at the search warrants why you are focused on Henry Parker now? <laughs> yes. Are you looking at Lloyd in any other cases? Uh, we, we, are, uh, we have an extensive history on Lloyd, on where he has been, and we are working with uh, Nick Mick. We're working with other jurisdictions on uh, identifying, uh, number one, what his travels were in their jurisdiction. Have any cases talk to us about uh, for what we know uh, about Lloyd Welch? Captain, you. Oh, hold on one second, sir. The state's attorney described the 40 year old case as being very difficult. Now that you've gotten to this process, do you still anticipate that it's going to be as difficult as the work? leading to this point in the so-called new phase? Uh, I do. Everything we've seen until now, uh, we have people throwing roadblocks, but obviously not on the law enforcement side, but uh, there are people that are throwing us roadblocks constantly that are trying to lead us in other directions. Um, I will, I'll be honest with you, there's good folks here in Bedford County, Virginia. I believe there's someone out there that knows a lot more that they've shared uh, so far. I believe they're waiting for the right reason to come forward uh, and share what they know uh, so that we can f continue to fill in the facts of this case. Sir, would Henry Parker 
Parker or even Connie Akers, for that matter, be considered, uh, and Patricia Welch, be considered persons of interest in this case? I don't want to label anyone today. What I will say is that we are focused on Henry Parker and Connie. Kevin, at what point did Lloyd Wells start cooperating? Mark, did you want to answer that? Or Katie? October of 2013. Mark, come on up here. Katie. Uh, this is Detective Janney, Mark Janney, Detective Katie Leggett. Countered Lloyd in October of 2013. Did you guys go back to him? Did he, I mean, how, at what point did, how did that work in terms of him coming? We arranged an interview with him. And there's been several uh, other interviews since then. Was it just a matter of the criminal profiling that you can do now that you couldn't do 40 years ago that you were able to pick up on some of the things that he did and said at that time? Uh, obviously, when we um, discovered him in the case file and started looking into his background, the, the criminal history that he had encountered, particularly re regarding uh, sexual crimes against children, was very interesting to us. Um, and then once we began uh, the interview process and um, evaluating the things that were, were said in those interviews, it continued to develop. So, so um, it sounds like there are uh, clearly there are things that you don't believe that Lloyd Lloyd Welch told you, but, it, but apparently there are things that perhaps you do believe. In, in our business, we believe what we can corroborate and prove. So, do you believe that he indeed saw Richard Welch abusing those children? Um, I don't want to speak to directly um, things that were said. I, I will say that we're not relying solely on things that were said by Lloyd Welch in our investigation of Richard Welch. Do you, uh, do you have these other folks who aren't persons of interest yet uh, under surveillance and are you constantly aware of their whereabouts? Well, if I were to answer that, it would defeat the purpose if we were. So um, the, the investigation is very much active and ongoing. Can somebody just walk through a little bit the um, stuff that is uh, in the affidavit about ads? So is that possible for somebody to describe a little bit about what they told you and that's in the affidavit? Um, I think the affidavit is pretty clear and, and consistent with what we would be able to share today. Um, Obviously, there were members of the family from Bedford, from Taylor Mountain, that were interviewed and provided the statements which are in the affidavit regarding the, the duffel bag and the fire. That affidavit, I mean, it's all very suspicious, and I think it would raise a red flag if any of these people showed up on my front porch. Have these individuals given you any indication of come forward five or I would prefer not to answer that just because of the ongoing nature of the investigation. Yes, ma'am. The affidavit mentions that Lloyd's companion, Helen Trader, was pregnant at the time that they visited. Correct. How is that information pertinent to the application? Because it helps set the, we know when that child was born, so it helps corroborate the stories that she would have been pregnant in March of 1975. What about the other folks on the Hillers Mountain who reported to you all that they smelled the fire, that they saw the fire, and the fire was burning for days, or any of those folks a focus of the investigation? No. Okay. Again, uh, thank you, to Sheriff Brown, uh, Mr. McCarthy, Randy Krantz. I believe Randy Krantz has uh, some words uh, for you now. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I want to set forth today is to and I know you're aware of it, and we do appreciate your questions and the public interest. As the prosecutor who is now charged with the responsibility to bring to trial the indictments against Lloyd Welch, please understand it's not that we don't want to answer questions, but we don't want to do anything that jeopardizes the investigation or Lloyd Welch's right to a fair trial. That's our duty, and that's our responsibility. What I can tell you this morning is explain what those indictments mean. A person who commits a felony, such as abduction, 
And during the course of that abduction, participates in, aids or abets, or by their very nature of them being involved with the abduction, can be held culpable if a death or deaths result from that. That does not necessarily mean or limit the Commonwealth of attempting to prove who was the direct killer as opposed to those who aided and abetted in that. Under the felony murder doctrine, the malice of the abduction of the malice or to establish the malice involved in the killing. Now what that specifically means is any of those who were involved in a concert of action, who aided Lloyd Welch, who abetted Lloyd Welch, also could have criminal culpability. Now, as prosecutors, we appreciate the difference between knowing what happened, believing what happened, and proving beyond a reasonable doubt what happened. The focus of the Bedford County Commonwealth's Attorney's Office, along with John McCarty in the Montgomery County State's Attorney's Office, is bringing every resource we can to bear to see that justice is done in a fair process. But many of those steps will have to be saved for the courtroom because and a judge will have to make some ultimate determinations regardless of what we may believe. So our next steps is marshalling the evidence that has been gathered, and I can think of no better word to describe these teams, these interlocking teams, than to say they are a league of justice. And what I would say is simply this. Every resource that we have, all of our determination is going to be focused in this case. Now, it is just much the prosecutor's duty to clear the innocent as it is to convict the guilty. And we will be working at both of those things. They too are in the locking. For example, as we establish the guilt of those who are guilty, we will also be establishing the innocence and the innuendos around others. My team includes, and I'm going to just take a moment to introduce my, my Deputy Commonwealth Attorney Wes Nance and my victim witness advocate Krista Calhoun. And this is important. We now, in this transition from investigation to prosecution, will have to be in a position to sift through all of the evidence and take what may be known in a court of law through our criminal procedure not every fact that we may believe or known is necessarily admissible in a court of law and we would like to have it admitted but my team here along with the rest of my office will bring in all of those resources to bear and it is a tremendous asset that we also have in partnership with the Maryland State's Attorney's Office and whatever other prosecutor's offices may become necessary as this case progresses. Now, the sheriff alluded to this. A person or persons charged with the crime of abduction with intent to defile, or in the case of Lloyd Welch in Bedford County, of committing a murder during the commission of an abduction with intent to defile tells us, and it is what the indictment states, that we believe that the purpose of this abduction and ultimate murder of the Lion sisters was for a sexually, for sexual exploitation purposes. Therefore, when evidence is received that Lloyd Welch saw Richard Welch engaging in those types of activities with at least one of the victims, obviously that is going to make Richard Welch a person who we are very interested in. And he remains and will be a primary focus as we move forward now that Lloyd Welch has been charged. The last thing that I would say, 
those that have been involved in the actual crimes or in the recent cover-ups, obstruction, non-cooperation, here's what I would say. Examine your conscience. We have rallied together to bring a league of justice, every resource we have to bear on this case. But to be ultimately and finally successful, we still need the help of citizens of good conscience who have information. It is easy now to ask, why did somebody knew something back in 40 years ago they didn't come forward? That's a very reasonable question. We have asked those questions. While I can't go into the content, what I would remind you of is numerous witnesses, witnesses have been subpoenaed and have testified before a multi-jurisdictional grand jury, and that testimony taken down, under oath, recorded, which can be referred to in future proceedings. And we are constantly measuring and evaluating the statements that are given to us as the detectives have corroborated facts. Part of our job as prosecutors will be evaluating those statements in light of the evidence to determine whether legal process is appropriate for those that have either lied, misled, misdirected, or obstructed this investigation. A lawyer once said that all it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Some people were not in a position to do something in 1975 because of their age. I would ask you to take that into your account. People that may be adults children, testimony and information through that lens. We literally have to step back in time to 1975 and see things as they were, not as we wish they would be. Good people are doing something. The good people here in law enforcement, prosecutors, citizens, and yes, the media or doing good and noble things in the search for the truth. That's what we're interested in. We ask your patience and forbearance as we move forward, but we are determined to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Uh, in closing, I would like to give you the information uh, where people can get in touch and give us information, leads, if they so desire. Um, the first one is the SOVA ICAC uh, telephone number, which is 434-534-9521. Uh, uh, or they can go online and go to CyberTip, CyberTip at NECMAC, ncmec.org. I want to add to what Randy said, uh, the media. Thank, number one, thank you for being here. Thank you for putting the information out. Uh, the first... Uh, press conference we had. A lot of you were were here. Most of you were here, and I tell I, I tell you that we we received calls. Uh, we received information. Uh, some of it good, some of it good. but anything anyone has to say. Uh, again, in closing, uh, and I will say in the criminal justice systems there are three parts: enforcement, courts, and correction. Uh, so far, we've got law enforcement and we've got courts involved. And we hope, and we, uh, I, I think it won't be long before we're going to have corrections uh, involved in this also. And hopefully we'll book up several uh, tiers of sales. Uh, that's what we can hope for. But that's it. Does anybody else have anything? John, anything? Nothing. All right, with that, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we'll be back with you. Thank you. For the second time now, in about 24 hours, we have heard from many working parts in, in, in a police investigation that has lasted now into, or has entered, I should say, now its 41st year.